Hi guys, this is Marcia with Kichi B Style, bring you my spring Nomi pattern, ME2082. Now, this pattern is a corset jumpsuit. It is a zip back pattern, so the zipper is in the back. There is a V in the back, um, so it's cut low in the back, but it still covers up your bra, bra straps um, if you're wearing a bra. Uh, there is a corset that is built into this jumpsuit. Now with the corset, you can um, opt to use boning or opt not to use boning. There are so many style options with this pattern and we're gonna get into a couple of them. But first I want to um, talk a little bit about the fitting of this pattern and the fabrics that you can use and also the views. So first off you have View A, which is the short sleeve version or the sleeveless version, I should say. And then you have View B, which has a cap sleeve or a little flange to it. Now, um, the B version has a, a contrasting corset and they both have wide leg panel pants, um, pockets on the side. To get into the sizing of the pattern, um, it comes in size AA, which is your 10 through 16. Those are those will be your smaller sizes. And it also comes in the size BB, which is your 20 wide to 28 width. Um, and those are, are going to be your bigger sizes. So I love a snatched corset. And it seems like the corset waist, finishing waist size, was just a little too big for me. So I usually cut the 16 so I did cut it at a 14 um, to get that snatch the bodice of this pattern was a little bit short and the corset came up a little bit high for me you will want to do a fitting um, just to make sure that um, the lines and the seams hit you in the right place to give you that snatch look and that um, it's not cutting you at the boobs. I cut off one inch of the corset and added that inch to the bodice uh, so that it would sit uh, where I needed it to sit on, um, on my pattern. Um, so my suggestion to you is to always, when you have a corset, to definitely do a muslin. And when you get that perfect size cut to basically save it, <laughs> make sure you cut your size and keep your size so that when you come back and create this pattern over and over again, you won't have to do all the math and the guessing work. It's already done the first time. So before you get started, make sure you looked at all the fabric suggestions, um, the cut and layouts, and don't forget to interface your pieces and make sure you have all your markings and notches cut before we begin. Let's get into it. So as I mentioned, I had to lengthen the bodice on this piece and shorten the corset so that the corset was not cutting me off at the boob. So this is how I did it. I added one inch to the length of the bodice and I moved all the markings down. And I also took my corset and I cut one inch off of the top of each corset piece. If you decide to modify or adjust your pattern, don't forget to transfer all your notches and markings. First, we're gonna take piece one, the bodice front, and reinforce the inward corner by stitching along the seam line where indicated and pivoting at the small dot. Okay, so I've made my stitches and I'm gonna go ahead and clip to this small dot making sure not to clip into the actual stitches. Make sure you get rid of any stray threads. And now that that is done, we're gonna go ahead and make these darts. I like to use my clips, but some people use their 
pins, which works great too. We're gonna go ahead and do both of these at the machine. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get into these darts. Starting from the bottom of the dart and stitching through the uh, small dot. Remember to back stitch. And there. Stitch through your dot and do not cut the thread because we're going to go back and we're going to tie it at the dot so that it doesn't pucker. All right, so once you've done your darts, make sure you press the darts toward the center. And then we're going to grab pieces two. And we're actually going to do our darts on piece two. Okay, take it to the machine and make your darts. All right, this is the dart. I'm gonna go ahead and take that loose there. And I'm gonna lower my needle first. And don't forget to back stitch. So now we're going to take piece one and two and with right sides facing, we're going to stitch the shoulder seams for piece one and two together. Go ahead and clip it. We'll go ahead and do both sides. and take it to the machine and stitch it. Once you've completed stitching your shoulder seam, you can take your bodice to the ironing board and give the seam a quick press, pressing the seam open, out, and flat. Set the bodice aside while we construct our front facing. Make sure you've interfaced your front and back facing, piece three and piece four. We're going to pin and stitch using the notches and lining up the raw edges. And then when you're done, make sure you finish the outer uh, edge of the facing. So stitch four to three here at the seam and four to three here at the seam. And then after that, you're going to finish the edge of outer edge of your facing. So now with the right sides together, we're going to pin our facing to our bodice, matching up the notches and the shoulder seams. I like to match the seams first, just to make sure I have everything in order. Yep. And then make sure those notches are together. Bring together the ends. And we're actually stopping two inches from the end of the back. 
So I'm just going to pin it there and fit that in there. Actually, move that around a little bit. About two inches from the back. Let's say, let's just move that here. Alright, I'm going to take this to the machine and stitch it around the neckline. Okay, so before we get into the cap sleeve, I want to go ahead and uh, trim this just a bit and make some clippings in the curved areas. I don't think the instruction says to do this. Um, but whenever I have curves, I like to clip clip the um, seam allowance, and I'm going to trim it because we are we are putting in lining, and that can be a little bulky. I'm just going to trim the basin a little bit so it'll be smoother. All right, I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna grab our flange because we are doing view B. Okay, so I have a flange here and I actually treat mine more as a flange than I do as a cap sleeve. That is personal preference. So I've actually added some interfacing to the back of it, which it does not call for, I don't believe, but I like my uh, flange to kind of be a little bit more sturdy. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold it over. Can't get that piece of lint. We're going to fold it over with wrong sides together. Folding along the, um, having the raw edges even. Fold along that middle line. We do that for both pieces. Go 
folding both pieces down the middle with with the raw edges even and we're going to baste it along the outer edge you can do that now okay so now you should have two flange or cap sleeve pieces i'm going to give them a press All right, that's a little better. All right, so we have two flange pieces and we're gonna pin the flange to the bodice. Let's find that sleeve. Notches and dots. Do both sides. And then we'll take that to the machine and stitch it or base it to the sleeve opening. other. Once you've stitched the flanges, go ahead and clip the curves and clip the curves to the facing, the front facing around the neck before we apply our lining. If you haven't done it already, you can go ahead and construct your lining pieces the same way that you constructed the bodice front and bodice back, pieces one and two. Once that's complete, we're going to pin the lining to the bodice, right sides together over the facings matching the notches in the shoulder seams. Once that's
take it to the machine and stitch the neck edges to within two inches of the back edges. Then understitch the neck edge of the lining to within three inches of the back edges. I'm just going to flip this over and give the seams a clip before adding the lining to the armholes just to remove some of the bulk. So now with right sides together, we're going to go ahead and pin the lining to the bodice along the armhole edges. Do this for both sides, both armholes. Once you've completed pinning both armholes, you can take it to the machine and give it a stitch. Once you finish stitching the armholes, go ahead and trim your armholes. Then you can turn the right side out, pulling each back through the front at the shoulder seams. Next, you're going to understitch the armhole edge of the lining as far as possible. I would go ahead and just give it a light press. Now we're ready to stitch our side seams. First, we're going to open out the lining at the sides and pin the front to the back at the sides and the lining edges together, matching the notches and armhole seams. Once the side seam is completely pinned, we'll take it to the machine and stitch it in one continuous seam. Once the sides are completely stitched, turn the lining down and press. Now we're going to get started on our corset midriff. We're going to start by pinning the center front seam of the midriff front piece number five. Now let's take it to the machine and stitch it. Now 
once the center front piece has been stitched you can go ahead and give the seam a press towards the front you can use your pressing iron or a pressing tool next i'm pinning piece number six to the raw edges of piece number five Don't forget to match your notches to make sure that you are pinning the correct edge. Next, I'm pinning piece number six to the raw edges of piece number five. Don't forget to match your notches to make sure that you are pinning the correct edge. Once six is pinned to piece five, the middle front, Go ahead and take it to the machine and give it a stitch. Once you finish stitching, go ahead and give the seams a press, pressing it towards the front. Now grab your midriff side back pieces, which is piece number eight. And at the side back edges, matching notches, go ahead and pin piece eight to the raw edges of piece six. Take it to the machine and give it a stitch. Now we're going to go ahead and press that last seam that we made with the midriff side back towards the back with our pressing tool. Lastly, we will attach the midriff back, which is piece number seven, to the raw edges of the midriff side back, piece number eight, matching the notches and lining up the raw edges. Then take it to the machine and give it a stitch. Go ahead and press your back seams towards the back. Go ahead and stitch your midriff lining sections together in the same manner as your midriff. So if you're adding boning to your corset midriff, like I am, you're gonna to wanna to use the seam allowance to create your boning channels. The instructions will tell you to use your lining seam allowance for your boning. I usually prefer to create my boning channels in the main fabric of the corset or midriff, but whichever way you decide to do it, you're gonna press the seam allowances toward the centers, pressing the side seams towards the back and the center front seams toward the left front. Then you're gonna to top stitch to lining seams 3 eighths of an inch from the seam line, catching in the seam allowances. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my bodice and I'm separating the bodice lining from the main bodice. And with the right sides together, I'm gonna to go ahead and pin my midriff to the lower edge of the bodice, matching the centers, notches, side seams, and the remaining seams to darts. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my bodice, and I'm separating the bodice lining from the main bodice. 
And with the right sides together, I'm gonna go ahead and pin my midriff to the lower edge of the bodice, matching the centers, notches, side seams, and the remaining seams to darts. Once your midriff is pinned to your bodice, you can take it to the machine and give it a stitch, making sure to pivot at the dot. Go ahead and give your seam allowance a trim and we're going to attach our midriff lining in the same manner. Once your lining is attached, you can go ahead and press your seam allowances to your midriff and your lining down. This step is not part of the original instructions, but I like to secure my midriff and my midriff lining together at the seam allowance so that they stay in place. So I'm going to go ahead and pin it together, matching up the seams, and then I'll take it to the machine and I'll baste it. So I'm going to stitch in the seam allowance, stopping about four or five inches before I get to the back edge. Then I'm going to go ahead and trim the seam allowance so that it's not too bulky. Go ahead and add your top stitching to your midriff about a fourth inch from the seam, stopping about five inches from the back edge. Now we're going to get into the boning. If you didn't opt for boning, then you can skip this step. But if you're adding the boning, you're going to take your boning and you're going to measure each boning channel and cut the boning the length of the channel minus about one inch. 
Then you're going to insert each piece of boning into its bone and channel. Do this for the entire midriff corset. Face the bottom edge of the main midriff and let's get started on the pants. Now we're going to stitch the panels of our pants starting with piece 9 and 10. Stitch pants front to pants side front at the side front edge matching the notches. Make sure to pin and stitch all the way down to the seam and then turn the seam toward the front. Press it and top stitch the front. Now with the right sides facing we'll add our pockets to the front by pinning pocket facing 11 to pants side front and matching the notches in the small dots. Pin it and then take it to the machine and stitch. Once your pocket linings are attached, you can go ahead and press the seam towards the pocket lining using a pressing iron or either your pressing tool. Understitch the pocket One. seam to the lining and turn the pocket under. I'm gonna go ahead and pin my pocket lining to the actual pant to secure it in place and then I'll take it to the machine and I'll top stitch the edge of the pocket. Once you've top stitched, you can go ahead and give it another press and then we'll move on to the pocket facing. Now we're going to stitch the pocket piece 12 to the pocket facing. With front sides together, pin the side front and the pocket piece 12 to the pocket facing along the outer edge keeping the front free. Now, now stitch the pocket to the pocket lining at your machine using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then baste the upper and side edges. Now we're going to grab piece 13 and 14, the pants back and the pants side back. We'll pin the two pieces together at the side back edge matching notches and lining up the raw edges. When you finish pinning, take it to the machine and stitch down the entire side back edge matching the notches. Then turn the seam toward the back and top stitch the back. Now we're going to take our back piece in our front piece and we're going to pin the back to the front at the inner leg seam. Make sure to match your notches and your dots. Once you have the entire inner leg pin, take it to the machine and stitch it.
stitch both inner leg seams and don't forget to finish your seam allowances. Now we're going to stitch the crotch seam from the upper edge of the front to about three inches below the single notch on the back. Let's go ahead and bring right sides together and pin the crotch together. Once the crotch is pinned, take it to the machine and stitch it and don't forget to finish your seam allowance. Once you finish stitching the crotch with the right sides together, pin and stitch the front to the back at the edges matching Once the notches and the raw edges. And don't forget to finish the seam allowances. Now that you've constructed the pants, we're going to pin the lower edge of the midriff to the upper edge of the pants with right sides together, matching centers, notches, and seams. Once you're done pinning, you're ready to take it to the machine and stitch the upper edge of the pants to the lower edge of the midriff. Now I'm just going to turn under my lining at the lower edge of the midriff seam and pin it. I'm going to stop pinning about three inches away from the back edge until I install my zipper and then I'll go back and finish. To install my invisible zipper, I've already opened the zipper and pressed the tape using a cool iron. 
with right sides together. On the outside, I'm going to pin the right side of the zipper face down on the right side of the zipper opening, keeping the free upper edge of the back lining and facing out of the way. You're going to have the coil along the seam line and the tape within the seam allowance. The top is going to stop about three fourths below the upper edge. Pin the right side of the zipper tape all the way down to the top of the notch. Once the entire right side of the zipper tape is pinned down, use your zipper foot at your machine, starting at the top of the zipper with the right groove of the foot over the coil, stitch along the tape to the notch, and then back stitch to reinforce. Now we're going to finish the remaining half of the zipper on the left side. I'm going to take my marking pencil to mark where my seams should connect on the other side of the zipper. Open up your zipper and pin the remaining half of the zipper to the left side of the zipper, opening in the same manner. Make sure the upper and lower edges of the garment are even and pin the remaining zipper all the way down to the top of the notch. Now take the garment to the machine and position your zipper foot at the top of the zipper with left groove over the coil. Stitch along the tape to the notch and back stitch to the reinforce. Now that your zipper is installed, close the zipper, check that it is invisible from the outside and that the seams line up. Now to close up the remaining facing and lining, we're going to turn the back facing and the lining to the outside and stitch the remaining upper edges of the back facing and the lining together, connecting to the previous stitching. Once you've pinned the remaining sections closed, you can take it to the machine and give it a stitch. Don't forget to trim the seam allowance before turning the remaining facing and lining right side out. You're going to turn under the remaining lining around the zipper and pin it and also continue turning down the midriff lining and pinning it to the seam of the midriff. Once you've finished pinning your lining, you can press the edge of the lining over the seam and slip stitch it in place. I'm also going to pin the neck facing to the shoulder seam and tack it down at the machine so that it's secure. So you're almost done. All that's left to do is hem your pants. So I chose to do a wide hem on this one. I turned my hem up um, about four inches and I'll be sewing a blind stitch. You can also follow the written instructions and turn it up one and a fourth and then top stitch it. But I had the extra length and I love a wider hem so I went for it. But once you've finished your hem, all that's left is to style it and rock it. Thanks for tuning in to my sew along and don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Kichi B Style for more sewing tips and ways to style this pattern. Peace.